So by show of hands, by show of hands, how many people here make YouTube shorts every day? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Four people in this room make YouTube shorts every day. Let me explain to you why this is a major opportunity. YouTube shorts, unlike Instagram reels, unlike TikTok, YouTube shorts has a very unique thing that I think is gonna matter to this room. YouTube, as some of you may know, not most, because people don't think of it that way, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world, behind Google. Now Bing with ChatGPT may start growing and we'll watch it, but YouTube. People go to YouTube to search because some people like myself learn more from audio and video than they do from written words. Cool? YouTube shorts, if you are smart and you're making a piece of video like Instagram and TikTok, but when you name the video, you think about naming it for people that are searching, not just for a clever naming for the video, Unlike Instagram and TikTok, that YouTube short can live for a very long time. I would argue if I'm selling homes, if I'm selling commercial real estate, if I'm selling, YouTube shorts needs to become a major part of the place you go. How many people here are making TikToks or Instagram every day? Raise your hands. Raise it high. Okay, so in general, we have a major problem in this room. But for the people that just raised their hands, just taking the video that you're doing on Instagram and TikTok and then bringing it over to YouTube Shorts and just naming it smartly from a search perspective will disproportionately grow the opportunity of your awareness and branding. What's more concerning to me is I don't know if this room is shy or like people didn't raise their hands, but again, going back to the opening rant, we need to outproduce a lot more than what the room just did. I, I will forever struggle with this conversation and I genuinely implore everyone to get a heck of a lot more serious about this. What's happening is my biggest fear is that a lot of people here in the next three to five years will regret not taking advantage of this era because the world will move. As a matter of fact, This is a fairly young audience, but how many people here do Google AdWords listings and run ads on Google for their listings? Please raise your hands. Again, pretty small. Jesus, I'm moving here and gonna sell homes. (laughs) The opportunity is very clear. Google AdWords was a very big tactic that in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, that I would speak to in events like this that people were not taking advantage of. It has become much more of a standard practice around the world and a lot of people took advantage of it but it costs a lot more to do the same thing. The thing that I'm really hyper focused on in this room is letting and forcing and motivating people to get serious about social media content while it's so underpriced. On an everyday basis, on an everyday basis, more and more people are coming in and producing and it throws off the supply and demand which makes it harder to go. Four years ago, five years ago when I was yelling and screaming about TikTok, very few people were doing it but everyone who did do it would get hundreds of thousands if not millions of views because there was less people producing but there was a lot of attention. We continue to sit in rooms like this and say, well, I can't sell my luxury homes on TikTok. And I continue to get emails every day from people who are selling their luxury homes on TikTok. The amount of people that decide about certain things like this without ever trying it is fascinating to me. To me, this is a very unique time in the history of selling stuff because of the distribution. When I go back, for the many in here that don't know my story, I, my dad, I was born in the USSR, I come to the US, my dad was a stock boy in a liquor store, 
and then he eventually owned his own small liquor store. I was very motivated by being the oldest son and wanting to build my dad's business. When I came into my dad's business full time in 1998, the business was doing $3.7 million in revenue. Five years later, the business was doing almost $70 million in revenue. We took no investment, no credit line, no cash infusion. This hyper growth was based on one thing, which is what I've been talking to you about for the last 25 minutes, which is the following. The number one way to grow anything when it comes to business is being the best at understanding where the underpriced attention of the world is. I'm gonna say it again because I want everybody to understand this. The number one way to grow a major business, top line revenue, sales, is to understand where the underpriced attention is. In 1998 for my dad's store, that was email. When I did email marketing in 1998, 1999, 95% of the people on our newsletter opened the email. Today, if you get 30%, you're a genius. In 2000, Google AdWords came out and I bought every wine term on Google AdWords for five and 10 cents a click. In 2006, when YouTube came out, I started making videos about wine when nobody was doing it. My career for the last 25 years has been buying or getting free underpriced attention on every single platform that's come out. No question, the only way outside of business development deals behind the scenes that anyone here can two, three, seven, 12, 15X their business is by executing an underpriced attention. The second this audience really grasps the concept of underpriced attention is the second that they will grow. The problem is underpriced attention always sits in the stuff of today. And most people, when they wanna build a business, look at yesterday. And as a matter of fact, they look at tomorrow. I've had more people ask me about, Gary, should I list homes on the metaverse? Then I've had people figuring out how to make perfect content on YouTube Shorts. We are obsessed with tomorrow, we are romantic about yesterday, and most everyone does not execute in today. My obsession of this keynote and this Q&A is to get the majority of this room very focused on today. Today, the people that are being affected by information to make a decision to consider a purchase is predominantly happening on social media. We continue to underestimate it, we continue to politicize it, we continue to have opinions about it, but the reality is it is the currency of attention. I'll give you another one that's very fascinating in this industry. How many people here by show of hands, this one will surprise me, are producing content every day on LinkedIn? Very nice. Solid. For me, LinkedIn, for a lot of you, is a humongously untapped social network. LinkedIn in the last seven to eight years has evolved to look a lot more like Facebook than look like a place where you go and find people to hire. What's super interesting about LinkedIn is the following. The mentality of when somebody is going through their feed on LinkedIn is very different than when they're going through their link on Instagram. The psychology of who that person is, all of us are a different version of our own selves depending on what stream we're going through. Look, I come here, I talk in this setting, I'm looking at the crowd right now and trying to process what are people thinking and the only thing that happens in my mind is what sentence can I say to get people to start making? The reason I start now with the macro is I've learned in the last decade, it has to do with insecurity. It has to do with judgment on oneself. I get it and it's very challenging. I don't think it's easy to just, I come in and say, stop being insecure and tomorrow you're like, I'm not insecure. But I think it starts with understanding that's why you're not posting. Number two, I focus on the tactics. Here's a very important part for everyone if they're gonna be successful at this game. A lot of people here do not want to make video. They don't feel comfortable. 
which is fine. My preference is you do. Video outperforms every other medium. It's the way the world works. However, if you are not comfortable on video, please be self-aware and find your own medium. For many of you, writing, which is more this than this, is very acceptable. A photo and writing on a post is very acceptable. Audio is something very few people are doing. Literally taking your phone, hitting record on the record and talking what you would do on video, but you don't have to be visual. For a lot of people it means you don't have to get your lighting right, your makeup right, your outfit right. You could just literally do it as you're thinking it through in the car, the office, or in bed but recording your thoughts on why this is a great listing and all the things you would say to a human being in an open house and putting it on recording and then just uploading the recording with a still picture is remarkably, remarkably right.